Uh, folks, thanks for coming for the conference. Um, I hope you got some takeaways and something good to take away with you. And we hope you'll come back, and I hope you had a good time academically and socially speaking. Um, it's always nice to meet people who are engaged in the same enterprise as we all are, which is helping our students graduate and doing things differently, right? A um, couple of quick things. Uh, we, after lunch, we asked if you could stay around for a little bit. We're going to have some uh, raffle. You got raffle tickets, and getting a ticket without a raffle is pointless, so we're going to actually raffle off a few baskets. Uh, oh. And make sure, if you, don't, if you don't have a raffle ticket, make sure you got a new one, because the ones from yesterday are not going to be used, so we are giving out new ones today. So if you don't have a raffle ticket, um, please make sure you get one. Uh, if you want to, um, I'm sure we can accommodate that. Um, because the baskets are beautiful. Look at those baskets down there. I mean, who doesn't want that one with a green bow? I mean, really. Um, the other thing I would mention is it really gives me great pleasure to introduce our closing keynote speaker. So, you know, we, we try to figure out who we're going to get as the keynotes. So we wanted somebody uh, like Marnie to start with. And we thought we need to have something very energetic to close out the conference. And... We, we will not find anybody more energetic than who I'm going to introduce next is Robbie. Robbie Melton, who is right there. She is the Associate Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs for the Tennessee Board of Regents. And she's a, been a technologist for her entire life. Um, as you can see by the wide array of things around here, you might think that this is a sales pitch. It's not. The sales pitch really is about why we should explore and use technology. And... I think by the time you finish, Robbie finishes speaking, you'll we all run out and buy things that she's talking about, because it's going to be very interesting. I first saw Robbie seven, eight years ago, and it was, it makes you want to go out and play. And so without, I'm going to stop talking, and I'm going to let Robbie take over, and please join me in welcoming Robbie Melton to San Antonio and the closing conference speaker. Thank you all so much for having me here. I know that you all will be eating. Life is good. So please know when it's something that I think that's going to give you that, oh my gosh, look, I'll say, don't chew. <laughs> Hold up. And they will adjust this mic, but boy, do I have some new technology for you. As you are eating, I will just kind of run through some things, but remember when I go, hey, stop chewing. This is something you need to swallow on. Then you all will know. Let me just share with you who I am, what I do, and why. My name is Robbie Melton. I'm the Associate Vice Chancellor for the Tennessee Board of Regions for Mobilization and Emerging Technology. I have the best job in the world. And if you would like this job, you too can have this job in four years. I'm going to retire. <laughs> However, please know I come from an academic background. I have been an associate dean, academic, vice chancellor, all of that good stuff. And you also need to know, when I share my first little tidbit with you, why I do this. Ladies and gentlemen, my love is teaching. All of these things that I have here and that I'm going to show you are teaching tools. They're not teachers. Also, you need to know if you're going to handle technology, things will happen beyond your control. So you have to have a really good attitude. You have to have a good sense of humor. So as I go through a lot of these tools or gadgets, and some things up here are junk, it might work and it might not. However, life is good. And you'll hear me say, well, life is good. If I turn on something and it doesn't work, you go, wow. I also have on my tech clothes, my tech shoes, 
and my tech jury. Now, I can't see it, but you let me know if I'm blinking up here. Am I blinking? OK. Is this wild? And you see my earrings. So I'm going to turn this off, but this is to let you know that your world has changed. You have an old tech person up here blinking at you because when you see what I have, you'll go, oh my gosh. And by the way, what color? Is it blinking, blinking, or different colors? All right, so to take the attention now off of my earrings, and maybe they will stop blinking, maybe not, life is good. All right, again, I got on my tech shoes. Yes, I have tech shoes. And I left my tech earrings, I mean watch, the one I wanted to share with you, and ring on my kitchen table. If you are a gadget person, can you kind of move your head back and forth? If you're not a gadget person, keep eating. So <laughs> let me just start off with sharing with you what's going to happen. Number one, you're going to see the latest in technology. You're going to see old technology. How old? How about this old? Ladies and gentlemen, some of you are as old as Robbie, and you remember the bag phone. You remember that you were really somebody important when you had that phone in your car, and you could only make one call per month that you could afford. And if you remember this phone, you remember that the magic sound was static because that indicated, oh my gosh, I'm, I might connect to somebody because usually you couldn't connect. However, here it is, your back phone, and I'm here to share with you. If you can connect, I can teach you. So that's where we're going with the old technology, the current technology, and oh my gosh, the new technology. So I'm going to start you off by sharing with you the Tennessee Board of Regents strategic plan. Here it is, everyone. Education, on demand, and within your hand. And as you see, mobile takes care of anything that you can move. So we don't limit this to just smartphones or tablets. We take in laptops and all of your emerging technology. If you would like a copy of the PowerPoint or all of the apps that I'm going to share with you, I have your code here that I will present at the end. This is to help you to relax and enjoy your food. So let me start out by sharing with you an overview of our plan made on my iPhone. In my days, we used to wait for something new to come out maybe once a year. Now, I can honestly share with you, it's once a month. Well, because we are a large system, four years ago, a company approached us and said, hey, we have the tablet of all tablets, and you will never have to buy another tablet again in your life because this is the tablet that you should have 
that will take you into the 22nd century. Ladies and gentlemen, that tablet was $1,000 called the Entourage. I want you all to know that we invested into the Entourage where each campus was going to receive one to test out. I want you to know, because we are a large system, it takes us a while to process invoices. So within 45 days, that company bellied up, and it was no more. We were out of $40,000. But the good news, again, long time to process in a big system. We had time to cancel the check. Life is good, OK? <laughs> My point is, we were going to lose $40,000. Now, let me share with you. If all of our campuses just wanted one of all of these devices up here, we would be out of a half a million dollars. And knowing what to come, even in three weeks, we would still lose money, and I don't think there would be a state of Tennessee higher education. So with that, I want you to get ready to hold that chew, because let me share with you what Tennessee is doing. Number one, any device, any type of technology that will come out, the good, the bad, and the crazy, we purchase a sampling of it and allow our staff and faculty members to test it out. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, I have one of the cheapest tablets you can buy for $35. And please know that 90% of our students come to us with something that they're going to try to connect to our network to take them down. So here is your cheap tablet. $35, and we had a campus ready to purchase 5,000 of these. Well, if you have a lot of time in your life where when you turn this on and you can wait mm, maybe 20 minutes for it to turn on, <laughs> life is good. However, if we do not have a plan so that if you find something, you being Tennessee faculty and staff and students, where we test it out, then we're in trouble. Our motto is BYOD, bring your own device. And for those, thank you. You working with me. I'm getting ready to rock and roll now. <laughs> However, we still have students to come to us with BYON, bring your own nothing. OK? <laughs> so we have to accommodate them and everything they bring to campus. So, Let's start rocking and rolling so that you know the progression of all of this technology. And you're going to walk away. So if you have a mobile device, after you finish eating, bring it out. You don't have to hide it under the table, because boy, do I have some apps for you. Good God. You're going to go home, and you're going to be apped out. So now let me give you my new title that I made up myself. I'm an apologist. <laughs> Doesn't that sound real cool? That means I study apps. Because if you say to people, oh, I just study apps, they don't give you that wow, that look of wow. But if I share with you I'm an apologist, and the first apologist, you go, ooh, wow, I want to be an apologist too. Well, you can. Just claim it. But you can't be the first because I'm the first. So. <laughs> As we go through, I want you to look at these latest statistics. I love this because in the classroom, in a workshop, in a conference, look at the typical behavior. If I don't engage you all quickly, 86% of you will start to text oh yes, or look at email, social network, or the bottom line that you don't even see here, you'll just smile and get up and walk out. <laughs> that means in terms of that old time teaching where I just stand here and I just talk to you, I'm in trouble. So knowing that, 
I'm going to keep half of you here. And by the way, even with all of this technology, you have to keep me on time. Because at the end, you're going to see me just a rolling. And I have a flight to catch. So Michael, remember, your job is, OK, wrap that baby up. So <clears throat> let me just give you what you already know. We all have cell phones. Anyone in here without a phone? Well, that takes care, yep, that takes care of that. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you all to know, we walk with it, we talk with it, we eat with it, we sleep with these phones. Yes, people sleep with their phones. I even have apps for you to put on your phone to do things to you while you sleep, okay? So again, this is to let you know the impact of all of this mobilization. So again, I'm going to get right to the heart of the impact of mobilization. Now, because you all are eating, let me prepare you. There's one little scene in here. You'll go, wow, while we're eating. Well, please understand, life is good. Just look beyond and forgive me. And here it is. It's time for a phone to save us from our phones. New Windows Phone, designed to get you in and out and back to life. And yes, so ladies and gentlemen, I have the latest, the greatest, and the wildest up here. And we have to track all of this technology. Some things will come, some things will go, some things will stay around. So I want you to know that there's real research regarding all of this technology, and we're using the gardener. But I want to share with you how we're really using our phone. So some of you can go, really? And I'll say, really. So beyond downloading app, most of us use our phones for the following, communication, and games. How many of you are playing Candy Crush? And you can't help it. You just, just can't help it. Number two, how many of you are still on Angry Birds? That's so old. <laughs> but how many of you help to take down Flappy Bird? And you might say, well, Robbie, why are you bringing all of this up? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to get close to you. I want to know how is it that we can have Candy Crush on our machine and it takes over our lives. So we have research on that also. So moving on, and here's our research of tracking the technology. As you see, wherever you go, you can set up an office. All right, this is where you stop chewing very quickly. Ladies and gentlemen, look at me. Yep, look at me. Here, you're going to stop chewing, but I have to hurry up. I am so old. How old is Robbie? Robbie is so old that when Robbie was a little tot, we had a bookmobile. It was a truck with maybe 100 books, and it had a bell going ding, ding, ding. And we would run out of there and go, we want a book. And we couldn't even read some of the books. But just to have a book from the bookmobile, life was good. All right, here you go. Ladies and gentlemen, here is an app that's free. It goes on all devices, even your laptop. Now, educators, somebody in here should say to me, oh my gosh, when I say the next following words. This free app will give you on your mobile device two 0.53 million books. Okay, 
one more time. Over to the left, let me talk to you all. We had a bookmobile with 100 books. And you all have a phone or a mobile device where right now you can download that free app to give you 2.5 free million books. Some of you should just jump up for joy and go, hooray, this is the best workshop I've been to. Now let me talk to you all over here. Look, listen, work with me here. We're educated. You talking about 2.5 free million books? Your whole class should be on fire. Because now we have all of this content and here you go, it will even adjust to your eyesight. If you want small print, good to the left. You want large print, good to the right. In the center, if you don't want print at all, it will read to you, work with me. So again, here you have over 2.5 free million books and we still are kind of passive about this technology. Well, here's your research right here. Look at 2005. You had one lonely person with the phone taking a snapshot of an event. Look at 2013. Everybody has a phone. And that's the way our students are taking notes. They hold up their mobile device and snap. So again, look at the progression. And now, here is a quick snapshot of the day of mobile. Uh-oh, and I'm going to go, yeah, you saw my little baby. Uh-huh, so I'm going to go back and run this. And here we go. right here. They're even in the womb with their techno devices. So again, I'm here to just warm you up regarding the impact of technology, regardless if it's starting from point zero to workforce development. But let me share with you our changing workforce. <laughs> and staff. So again, I want to go now to share with you how we are changing. Here's how we're going to conduct business on the college campus. With Google Wallet, you can pay with your phone at hundreds of thousands of merchants with any card you want. To get started, select your card. Visa, MasterCard, or Discover. Credit or debit. If you don't see the card you want, it's a snap to add another one. All your payment info is encrypted and stored securely in your Google account online. And with Google offers that automatically sync to your phone, saving is simple. Let's say you're buying a smoothie. Just tap the back of your phone on the terminal. And that's it. 
a confirmation screen will let you know you're good to go. Enjoy your blended beverage. So again, ladies and gentlemen, I have your new device up here called the Loop. You don't carry your credit cards anymore. You just take this loop or this little thing and just touch whatever, life is good. It stores all of your information. Now, some of you should be saying, I'm not gonna try that, uh-uh. <laughs> well, on behalf of our committees, we test all of these things out to let you know if it's good, if it's I'm not sure, or wow, are you kidding me? So, for this one, I have to come down to get your attention. So while you're eating, you have something to think about. As you all are eating, you're not even aware of something new in technology called smart fork, eye fork. In other words, as you all are eating, if you're eating too quickly, eye fork will let you know. Eye fork will say, stop it or it will just hold that fork. <laughs> Not only that, if you're eating and we want to find out what you're eating, guess what? The new updates for iFork. Well, what? Let us know. Wow, okay? And over here, if you're eating and we need to analyze what you're eating, then guess what? Smart fork, we have it here. Now, smart fork costs $99. Now, look at me. If all I fork is going to do is share with me that you're eating too quickly, I'm sure the person next to you for $50 will let you know and just tap on you and say, hey, slow it down, slow it down, okay? So a lot of these things will come out and we have to assess the educational value of it to determine if the cost is worth it. So to keep that in mind, this will warm you up on some of the other items that I have coming to you. So again, with mobilization, it's everywhere. Even with our restaurants, but I love this one. All right, this is where you stop chewing. Hold that chew. Ladies and gentlemen, when people share with me they're too old to learn about technology, I always point to this slide right here. The Pope. The Pope has more devices. All right, everybody, look. You can start chewing now. The Pope is using mobile devices. So you might say, well, Robbie, that's nice. Okay, he's reading a couple of things. No. They were able to assess some of the problems that they are having, such as going to confession. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you in here have not ventured to confession in a long time, okay? They figured out a problem and used technology where now you too can confess on your smartphone, okay? In other words, there you go. Here is your new confession booth. It is your phone. Now, a lot of people just said, oh, that's just horrible. Well, we had a group of faculty members and researchers and, you know, staff from the Catholic Church to really test out this app. By the way, it's made by the Catholic Church. I want you all to know, the app is so well designed. I'm not Catholic, but I went on. I was able to identify all of my sins. <laughs> it aligned the sins up to the prayers. And at the end, they even had a little hotline button, you know, go straight up, okay? My point is to help you all to realize that it's education that is holding out on all of this technology. Now, you will also see something else, the rosary. If you have the time afterwards, I want you to see how they designed the rosary app where you actually pull on the beads. 
The beads light up. It's more than just reading. It's interaction. You pull the beads, Hail Mary, full of grace, and you pull the bead. So again, I want you to know in terms of reaching the now generation, even the churches are turning to technology. So here is the workforce of tomorrow. Give you a little bit. Let me take you back to the future again. Remember what I said before, if you want to know where the trends are going in field services, all you got to do is look at your kids. Here we have our subjects who are teaching us all the lessons we know, need to know about the future. Well, look at what they're doing. They're all on their phones. How are they using those phones? Are they making phone calls? Are they clearing out their inbox before school tomorrow? Are they creating Outlook meeting invites to find the right time when all their friends are going to be online so they can talk? No. They're texting, they're using Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all these social tools. And this is how they communicate with one another. Let's look at the trends here. Social networking has outpaced email usage dramatically since 2007, and it continues to rise. I checked this theory out myself. I still have a personal email account. I open it up, the only thing in there is spam and bills. If any one of my friends wants to get in touch with me, they get me on Facebook. It might be easy to dismiss these trends due to how annoying the rampant use is amongst our youth. So but let's look at what these things have to teach us. Here's the story of a 13-year-old girl named Caitlin. Caitlin is at the dinner table, and of course, she's on her smartphone. And she notices that her BFF has just checked in at her boyfriend's house. Caitlin was not expecting her BFF to be at her boyfriend's house that night and instantly springs into action. So what does she do? She instantly creates a chat session with all her friends to discuss what her now former BFF is doing over at her boyfriend's house and how they should address the problem. Think about that. Today's teens know exactly where each other are at any given time, and they can instantly collaborate one to many to solve problems, just as Caitlin is solving her problem, and they do it all in real time, and they do it with such ease. Let's translate this to the field service workforce of are, tomorrow. Now let's say Caitlin is not a 13-year-old girl. She is now your air conditioning or HVAC repairman. She is on the roof of a building and she is trying to fix a problem that she doesn't quite know how to solve. She can find out exactly who in her area, who can help her or who has the parts. She can instantly create a group to collaborate on how to solve the problem. And she can do it all in real time. It's the exact same concept that teens are using today, only applied to a business problem. Okay, so let me break this down to you all very quickly. I have a couple of apps. Some of these apps I kind of worry about. One of them helped me out, so I'm not going to um, criticize it. It's called Trapster. It's free. We had to test Trapster out. What is Trapster? Well, if you have a, um, hmm, if you are a speeder and you're speeding along the highways and byways, this app will let you know of all of the state troopers and the police officers. Well, we don't promote speeding, but we wanted to test it out to see if it would work. I want you all to know not only does it work, it will even redirect you if there's an accident. It will let you know of the weather. I mean, this app is so fantastic. I went, hmm, wow. Why can't we have this type of technology in education? Another one that I hate to bring up while you're eating, but you have to know the technology, is called sit or squat, OK? This technology is one of the most collaborative apps you can find on the market, and it's free. What does this app do? Well, when you're on the highway and byways going home on your freeways and you need to go to the restroom, this app will let you know of the clean and dirty restrooms. So you go, how can that be? Well, you have people who don't even know each other collaborating, sending messages, and information to a server where at any time on your phone, you will know what to pass by and where to stop. I say to you all right now, 
why don't we have that for math? Wouldn't it be nice to know all of the people who are working on algebra or some type of educational concept, but we don't. We have things like sit and squat, or how about this one? And trust me, these are apps that we tested out. How about this one? Go pee. All right, work with me. Run pee. Help me to understand, not over here, but just for you all. Somebody has the time where they watch movies, new movies and old movies, and they let you know the time to get up and take a break. Okay, I want that job. I want that job that you have nothing else to do in life but sit there and watch movies to let people know when it's time for you to get up and go grab some food or something and come back and not miss anything. What happened to education? We have all of this amazing technology, but we are still trying to decide if we should have electricity on the campus. So here's what I want you to know. In terms of mobile devices, games. Downloading nothing but games. And with that, let me share with you we only use 5% of our mobile devices for education. And you're talking about money. Look at how much money on these mobile app games, and you're talking about $16 billion. And here it is. For those of you who are still stuck on Candy Crush, I have the link down at the bottom that you can click on where you can go and get the cheat sheet. Now, I want to talk to you all over here on the left. Help me to understand. How is it our students and some of us are so engaged on connecting colors that we connect a day, night, when we're with people alone? Why, what's wrong with education where our kids can't be that engaged on what we're teaching? Wouldn't it be nice if the game like Candy Crush, for those of you who don't know Candy Crush, Candy Crush will cut you off to say you need a rest. All right, over here to the right. We have games that are so addictive, the game cuts you off and say you've been on for 25 hours, not 24, and you need a rest. Wouldn't it be nice if our students were so, so engaged with our subject that we would have to cut them off? Yep, that's where we're heading. So for any time, any place on demand, on behalf of the Tennessee Board of Regents, we say yes to mobile devices, and we say take them from under the table because we will use them as teaching and learning tools. So again, why mobile learning? Let me just give you a little... <laughs> Technology alone is not enough. Okay, I'll stop right here. I just want to show of he uh, head movement. How many of you have an iPhone or some type of Apple device? Yes, you can just, okay. What about my Android people? Where, where are my Androids? Uh-huh. And what about Windows? Windows? Okay, beyond Robbie having two Blackberries, anybody else in here with a Blackberry? One, one person, life is still good, life is still good. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you all to, you don't have to say it out loud, but how did you decide which phones you wanted? How did you decide? Did someone say you need an iPhone or you need an Android or a Windows or stay with your Blackberry? And who trained you? Who trained you to use those? In other words, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of these tablets, it is the first type of teaching and learning tool that comes to you without direction. When you open up your iPad, 
You don't see directions. Why? Because it has it where you start to touch and learn. So that leads me into a whole new era of teaching and learning with bring your own devices. So whether you have an HP, Windows, Dell, Apple, Sony, name it, we have it all here for you. So what I have for you is how do we keep up with all of these devices? Well, maybe we keep up this way. So let me just bring this up. And that's not working. Life is good. So I'm going to go and share with you what we have. Ladies and gentlemen, here's where I start going. I have for you your Kindle Fire. You need to know on behalf of higher education, Kindle 1, Generation 2, and Generation 3 did not meet ADA compliance. That means that you cannot purchase devices that are not ADA compliant for your institution. I have here the Nook. Why do we have all of these devices? Because all of them have very unique features. Why the Nook? The Nook has an interesting feature. What? If you have a Nook and I have a Nook, we can Nook Nook. Why? Because information can go from one device to another just by touching. On the Kindle Fire, they have a new type of feature. They have a lady that will come on your device, take over your device when you don't even know how to operate the device. So we wonder, so why not all? I don't know. I have your Samsung. I even have your flip phone. Yes, you too can still use your flip phone for a minute. So. I also have for you your Chromebooks. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of our faculty, please know we're having problems with the Chromebooks. They're cheap. They're cheap. Oh, they're cheap. But in terms of durability and lasting, look at us. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. And for those of you who would really like a good job, we have a destruction team. That's a team of faculty, students, and faculty that take new technology and destroy it. Why? Because if you're buying tons of these, you want to know if they will stand up if you drop them on the floor. So we have a team of people that take the technology and just throw it against the wall, jump on it, put it in water, and we get feedback. And yes, we give them um, credit for um, scholarship. So, with that, we are having problems with the Chromebooks. We're also having problems with the Nexus. So again, they're cheap, they're easy, but long term. Here's your Samsung products. Everybody, your Android's coming in. Oh boy, you talking about a beautiful machine. But what we're finding is so hard to navigate, you need to take a class one-on-one -on, -one on how to use this machine. Most people just use the basic features, but all of the features that you see with the double screens and all of that good stuff, they never get to it because you need to take the time to learn it. Oh, but here's the one. This one we use for our STEM faculty member. This one is what I call the half-half. Half laptop, and it turns into a tablet. This is your Windows machine. Windows 8.1 from Dell, we were very skeptical of this because of this. We knew it wouldn't last. We were wrong. This has been one of the best machines. If you want a laptop, here it is. You want a tablet, here it is. And it passed the destruction test. So again, this is one machine that we've had success with, and I have here you go. Here's your teachable moment. Your Surface Pro. Now, help me to understand how, yes. XPS. X, uh huh. And because you ask, when you get through, you don't even have to worry about it. You come and get this and check this baby out. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, here's the one that I look at my face because I got an attitude, bad attitude. Help me to understand how in the world. 
They come out, they, Microsoft and company, come out with a machine. The first one was RT. Boy, we were ready. Boy, we were going to buy hundreds of them. But with our strategic plan, we only buy 20 and we pass them out. We found out you could not bring over your old files to the RT. The RT was just an RT. Also, you need to know the keyboard did not meet ADA compliance. It's that keyboard that you saw on TV where they were break dancing on the table and they were just snapping. Yes, it snapped us because we found out we couldn't order it because it didn't meet those students with disability. And then, here where I get an attitude. After we purchased a couple of these babies, it wasn't eight months they come out with the Surface Pro. Help me to understand, if we had not implemented our strategic plan, we would have purchased over 5,000 RTs only eight months later. Here comes the pro where you can transfer your file. That's not the end of the story. Ladies and gentlemen in the middle, guess what? Eight months later, guess what? Yes, another machine. Ladies and gentlemen in all of the room that can hear me because I'm angry. We purchased thousands of the Surface Pro 2. Look at it. Faculty happy, we're happy, and only to find out next month there's a Surface Pro 3. Yes, yes, yes. So again, on behalf of higher ed, you can't afford to be caught. So this is what we do. We look at all of these devices, we evaluate them for beyond communication. Check what your phones can do, and here we go. Rock! gentlemen, we can turn your smartphone into over, are you ready to, for this, 50 different tools. And if you're going to use your smartphone or tablet as a teaching and learning tool, we have to look at your program area. If you are in the humanities and the music and you want to use your smartphone as a musical instrument on behalf of the Tennessee Board of Regents, we go and find the tools that you need. You want a drum? Here are your professional drumstick. You want to play the guitar? We have your professional guitar pick. If you want to paint, we have all of your styluses over there, anything you can name that will help you to use your mobile device as an effective teaching and learning tool. So let me just share with you what I have. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the medical community, I have for you the latest in your eye health. This is your blood pressure cuff, and yes, I want you to know we have teams across Tennessee and partnerships with businesses, hospitals, and other system to find out is this junk or tools on behalf of those people with high blood pressure. Listen and listen carefully. The number one reason that people have problems with their high blood pressure is because they do not check it or they wait till they go to Walmart and put their arm in that little cuff and go, wow, I don't know if this is right or wrong. I'm here to share with you, everyone, you have the means not only to educate with these tools, but to save lives. Again, I was able to use this on my husband, who doesn't believe in any of this. And it registered 150 over 110. If anybody know anything about blood pressure, he was stroking out. And he said to me, I told you this was just junk. Look at me. Yeah, he was at the point of having a stroke. Ladies and gentlemen, with your phone, you now have a medical tool. I have all of your devices up here, one that we're using in Africa, and other places, and this is where you take your 
phone and turn it into a diagnostic tools. Here's one that sits right on your phone. These lenses are so powerful, you're able to use some of them to diagnose eye diseases. How about the first scanning of skin cancer, as well as your hearing aid. So I'm going to just go through and share with you what I have here. First of all, take a look at this very quickly. With this miniature transmitter. All right. Come in, Chief Quimby. Yes. What time is it? 829. Thank you. It's all right. This is 86 reporting into control. How's it going? I have an emergency situation. Relay the information to headquarters. Enterprise. Order of the ship's computer library records. Jason, can you read me? I read you. This is Secret Agent Rock Slag. Okay, partner, let's make a little spectacle of ourselves. Anything particular in mind? The atomic punch! There's only one man who can get us out of here in time. I'll be down right away. I'm on my way. We're on our way. I'm on my way. We're on our way. I'm on my way. Here it is right here, ladies and gentlemen. You're on your way. This is a full phone. You don't need another device. And you'll notice that I have two. We've been testing this one out for three years. This is a full phone, video camera, snap camera, name it, here it is. This one just came out. It's not even on the market. We have been testing this for six months. You will see that there's no brand on it because one of the big companies will buy this company out. I was able, you're going to love this story, to go to AT&T and ask them to remove my SIM card out of my phone and put it in here just to see if it would work. Of course, they told me no. Look at Ravi. I know better. We were able to put it in. It works. This is 4G. This has app. This has a microphone. This has everything that you can name. It has a computer built into it. And it was under... $200. AT&T called me back, yes they did, and asked that they kind of see the phone and see if it was working. Look at me. I uh, know. Uh-uh. So again, on behalf of education, we get emerging technology before it comes out. So again, whether it's for medical use or tools, but here is where your phone uh, my name is Aido Anozjan. Uh, I'm an associate professor uh, of UCLA. electrical engineering at UCLA and at California Nano Systems Institute. Well, one of our recent work uh, is uh, uh, on uh, lens-free computational microscopy. Its impact is especially uh, for telemedicine applications, bringing microanalysis tools to locations where there are not uh, any hospitals so that the healthcare workers could have their cell phone uh, work as microscopes to look at specimen, yes, to look at, for instance, blood cells to make a, a more a accurate diagnosis. So through technologies that you can install on cell phones or attach to cell phones, you can potentially increase the penetration of a central hospital to a larger area. This type of a technology where we installed. Ladies and gentlemen, I have everything you can name. I have your latest and greatest. Here's one. This is your Elmo, your document camera. As you see, it fits in my hand, comes with a stand, and over here. Does it work? Yes or no? Oh, no, that, you know, too slow, too slow. Over here. Does it work? Yes or no? Yes, see, if I had this group over here, they would be my testers. Why? Because they just threw out an answer. You know, life is good. Because we need testers. And now, here it is. We've been testing this out for three years and not a single problem. It hooks up by USB.
to a Mac or a PC, and we use it in our natural science, biology, chemistry. This is a document camera. We also found out you can use it with Skype. The price of this, get ready. This is where I come back to you. This should be the price is right. Under or over $100? Under, $60, okay? And if you are a poor educator, meaning you never have funds, work with me here. Call the companies up and say, I teach and I would like to try your, would you let me have it please? and you too will receive a lot of resources. I want you to know we were not satisfied with this. Why? In order to use this, you had to carry around a laptop in the field. We don't have time for that. Well, we called the company up, look at me, life is good, and they worked it out. Ladies and gentlemen, you no longer have to do that. They made this device right here. You plug it in, life is good. It will take video cameras, whole nine yards. We were not happy. We needed light, let there be light. So we called the company back and worked with them, and guess what? Now we have light. This is a full microscope, telescope, all of that good stuff. Life is good. Over here, guess what I have? Some of us, when we go to the doctor's office, must take an EKG. That's when they just put all those little stickers on you and hook you up like Frankenstein. Not anymore. This is your new EKG. It's a bracelet. It comes in different colors, too. And it will give you the same information on and on as your EKG that we're testing out. Oh, what else do I have over here? Well, I have your blood oxygen level. You know how you go to the doctor's office? All of this now is on your smartphone. Not only that, oh yes, I'll get to 3D printing. We have everything mobile, whether it's tech or not tech. Well, here's something right here. Wouldn't you love a projector? I would. Well, we test them out all. Here is one of the best ones, and it is Brookstone. And so we test it in the field, in the classroom. I'll go right up here. You see that projector? Well, look at my projector, too. Okay, and that's with bright lights on. And you go, wow, how much, Robbie? Because we're poor in Tennessee. Well, this was under $250. However, we called the company because we know how to beg. And we said, you know, it would be really nice if you would help us out here. We, we need to test that out. By the way, we've been testing that one for two years. Haven't changed that bub. Don't even need a bub. Just plug it in. Life is good. Well, here's something that you would like to see. Wow, let's see if I can turn this on. This is your infrared keyboard. Oh, yes. You can just keyboard on my arm, keyboard on the floor, keyboard on the ceiling. And everyone went out to say, wow, Robbie, look at that keyboard. I'll give you a little keyboard right here. And there it is. So we went, and this is a wow factor, everyone. This is where you just put it down, and you can have a keyboard anywhere you want to. Well, let me share with you. On behalf, oh yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, even on your arm, you can just keyboard, all right? On behalf of this costing that when we got it, over $300, I don't care if it was $3, it's junk. It's junk. It's cool if you want to meet someone and you want to start up a conversation, okay? You know, but it's junk. And so again, we had a campus ready to order, how about 300 of these, and we would have been out of luck. For the sake of time, I want you to know on behalf of ADA, we have to make sure that all of the devices meet those requirements. Here are your keyboard for those who are visually impaired for your iPad and for your tablets. But what else I have up here, I have can you guess what this is? This should be guessing. You should have it. Uh huh. This is your printer. Yes, printer. Okay, look at me. Printer. All right, so here's your mobile printer, Bluetooth, that if you want to print anything out, life is good. However, forget that. Guess what I have? Some of you would like to sniff and smell. I have it right here for your smartphone. Yes, I do. Yes, yes it is. See, you're working with me, okay? The rest of you, uh-uh, uh-uh. I even have strawberry, lavender. Okay, see, here it is right here. Go ahead and say, who would want to? Who would want to sniff their cell phone? 
Well, well, I got something for him, not the rest of you. Guess what's coming? You'll be able to eat your cell phone. Yes, that's the truth. Here it is, and now here's my teachable moment for you all. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why you need teams, and you need people, you need higher ed, you need educators, you need teachers to shape this technology. Here is a device that came out, and I laugh because I don't have a dog, okay? So I'm gonna use Robbie as a teachable moment very quickly. I don't have a dog, so I don't wanna communicate with my dog. This will allow you to communicate with your dog. Dog bark, bark back, you tell Lassie to come home, and we sat there and said, who would buy this? Who would want to talk to their dog, okay? Well, on behalf of law enforcement, someone in the crowd said, Robbie, I bet you I can use that with our drug dogs. I went, yeah, that's what I said, oh. And then <laughs> someone over there said, what about your CNI dogs? Wouldn't it be nice if we could communicate? And I went, oh. So before you cross something out, everyone, you better make sure you know. So on behalf of time, and that's the destruction team, okay? <laughs> Nothing bothered me. I have a device right here. Oh no, you think it's a scanner? This will only take a few seconds. I'm keeping all my time. Hey, it didn't break, so that meets criteria one. So, <laughs> I want to get, oh, by the way, did you know that your phone can turn into an ultrasound tool? Yes, ma'am, yes, sir, here's peak vision that they're using eye exam, hearing aid, all of your mobile devices. Uh, oh yes, you'll have a sticker you'll uh, put on, but I have your sensor dome. Here it is, everyone, right here, very quickly. I want you to see it. What will this do to your smartphone? It will make it smarter. It will pick up gases, rayon, temperature, on and on. And this baby right here, we laugh. You put this in your smartphone, you get drunk, you blow in it, it lets you know your alcohol level. Okay, so we sat there and on behalf of our technical colleges, I want you to know one of your auto company is adapting this technology so that when you put your hand on the steering wheel and you breathe, this technology will pick up your alcohol level and will determine if that car will start. So again, welcome to technology. And very quickly, I'll save that because you're eating. Um, 3D printing, 3D printing very quickly. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 3D printing. Go ahead and look at me. Why, Robbie, why, why? because you now, with the new 3D printing, can build a house in 24 Scientists hours. claim to have developed a revolutionary new giant 3D concrete printer that can build a tooth. Not only that, we have every tools. We even have a virtual um, shopping tool. And by the way, I do have this tool right here. It's a spray gun and a stun gun, but I didn't think I could pass security coming here. But yes, on behalf of law enforcement, I have a smartphone that will take you down in a minute from the technology. So with all of that, I want you to see very quickly your new computers. This is in beta. Love this one on behalf of ag everybody look over here all right here we go you want to plant you want to know what's happening to your soil i plant this is what you need i plant i plant you put this in the soil and it will diagnose whatever's going on come on your uh, mobile device life is good and if you don't even know what it is i have an app for you you just hold your device over the live plant it will share with you it's a treat okay so <laughs> Moving on, I have your holograms. Oh, somebody's going to stay after to see this baby. Ladies and gentlemen, I have your first tablet right here. 
3D without glasses. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. The little alligators come out and try to grab you. Here it is. And what you want to know, it's under $400. No glasses, 3D. And you got to take a look at this. You go, hmm, wow. We're just at the beginning. Very quickly, not only do I have your 3D, I have your leap motion. And I have your wearable bands up here. I just got this. Here it is. And your home tools and your 4D printing and your Google glasses. Hot dog. Here you go. This is firefighter Patrick Jackson, glassware developer. Okay, Glass, show floor plan. He wants to give firefighters hands-free access to the information they need when they need it. So one day, firefighters everywhere can work faster, safer, smarter. Okay, Glass, show extraction diagram. 2001 Ford Expedition. Cut right here. Because every moment on the front lines is a chance to keep pushing what Glass can do. Every higher ed institution should have Google Glasses, but please know they are already outdated. You now have Google Glasses contact lenses. Now, before you go, not me, not me, everybody look this way, you through eating. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Medical Breakthroughs, with these new contacts coming out, those who are diabetic will no longer have to prick their finger. And that's over with. It will pick up your blood sugar level by your tears right there with all of this technology. So moving on, we have a smart bed, yes we do. We have wearable technology, and how many of you consider yourself techies? <laughs> Me neither. And how many of you know uh, about wearable technology? Yeah. Yeah. Did you know? Me neither. So wearable technology is becoming a huge trend. You know, there's, there's a Google Glasses. You've heard about them. They're the glasses that they put the Internet right in your face so you can literally Google the weather while you're walking into a tree. <laughs> and they have these Nike uh, fuel bands that they're bracelets, and they tell you how many steps that you've taken. And uh, there are these smart watches. They're so much better than the stupid watches. <laughs> and... The point, the point I'm making is this stuff is, is taking off like crazy, and I want to get on board with the trend, and uh, so I took a ton of my own money, like $43, and <laughs> I invented some wearable technology of my own, and I'd like to show you what it is right now. All right, so first we have Amy right here. <laughs> Amy looks like she's just wearing a regular old fanny pack that your older aunt might wear at Disneyland. But it's not just a regular fanny pack. Look at this. It's toast. That's what it is. Oh, sure, you can keep almonds in your purse as a snack, or you can make piping hot toast on your hip. You tell me what's better. And Amy's headband. You see this headband? It's not a headband. It's butter. <laughs> Kids love a good bedtime story, and now they'll love it even more. Choose a story from their PJs. Capture the code, and that's it. It's simple, and it's fun for everyone. Now your child will be excited to go to bed. Smart PJs, let's share a story together. <laughs> well, I'm going to make a comment about this. Here's your smart PJs, and I'm getting ready to wrap up. What you do, you take your mobile device, your phone, your tablet, you hold it over the PJs, and it will sing lullabies to you. It will read bedtime stories to you. 
why don't we have teaching clothes? You know, let me have some teaching clothes up here so you can wave it over me and some math problems can jump out at you, okay? <laughs> Help me to understand how educators have allowed all of this to just start to create and we're not at the table. I want some teaching clothes, okay? So again, in wrapping up, we have all of this technology up here, but we don't have the research. We don't know if it's going to be effective. And by the way, how many in here can tell me right now how many eggs you have in your refrigerator? Well, you wouldn't have to guess if you had what? Smart egg carton, okay? <laughs> All right? Help me to understand. Well, as we got deeper in this, what we did find out, which is an educational value, it will also help to detect E. coli. Ah, now you too would want IA carton. So to wrap up everyone, we have all of our wearables, we have our odors, here's that bacon, and we even have, yes, you will eat your smartphone on the half of the food industry. Here is I tried. Here it is right here, ladies and gentlemen, and wait till you see what it can do. I was at Penn State a couple of months ago. It was in a box. Someone came up afterwards and said, can I try it? And we did, and this is what happened. Hi, my name is TK Lee. Robbie Milton lent me the iTribe, this little device. I'm going to play some Here music with this. After some practice, I finally got it to Watch him kind of under control. Here it goes. All right, everybody wake up. Get me up, oh my God. He's operating the computer with his eyes. Just his eyes using this device. Don't you know what that would do for those students with disabilities? You all, somebody in here should be going, oh my God, oh my God, right, come on. And here it is right here. And the cost, $99. That's it. $99. And again, Thank you, Robbie. as you see, that was fun. he's from Penn State, couldn't find anyone in Tennessee. Hmm, I wonder if I could have found someone in Texas. I don't know, because we look for people to test out a lot of this equipment. So as a wrap up, I have the basketball, but couldn't get it in the case. And we have the smart bed. We have the smart toothbrush, too. And we have the quirky. And we have all of the things that are to come. How about this one? You'll talk about this tonight. How about eyelashes? That will communicate to the internet. Not only eyelashes, we have nails and the whole nine yards. So I want to end on this note. There is a time and a place for all of this. We have a mobile app center that we have curated 70,000 mobile apps from pre-K to PhD and align to all of your devices. And I will leave this with your organizer, all of the apps that will impact you. But I'm going to leave you with this. Yeah, I just giving you a little update of all that I have for you all in every subject level. You should be saying, oh my gosh, uh-huh. But I'm waiting on that last slide. You know that last slide that I'll probably pass up Okay, so as we go to the last slide, yes, there was many more for you all. Here it is right here, and I will thank you. Emma. Huh? Emma. Not anymore. Emma. Every day it's getting on my nerves. Emma. 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 I thank you all very much. This was to give you a little glimpse of the future. Thank you. I thank you very much. And hold up, everybody. Two things. Yesterday, there is an app called Word Lens. 
that app costs nine dollars and every language you add on it was four ninety nine it is now free what can it do ladies and gentlemen if you will just see what it can do and then I'm uh, Michael we are ready for the airport this is the app word lens ladies and gentlemen when you see what this app can do and now that it's free anyone with an agenda anybody got any printed material work with me and I'm going to use air server so you all can see what it can do and here we go and now you see I'm using my iPad wirelessly and this is a $4 solution. I do not have to use Apple TV. I don't have to use a special projector. It's a $4 solution that we found called Air Server, where I'm able to mirror from my tablet to the screen. And now let's see what it can do. You're going to love this. Ladies and gentlemen, look at what this app can do. I can take anything printed, and it will instantly translate into Spanish, French, or whatever. Oh, you didn't like, who said wow? There you go, you need to work with me. Again, it will take anything printed and all you have to do is hold it over there and it instantly translates. Ladies and gentlemen, this, oh, this is a miracle. Well, the machine's tired, I'm tired, you tired, you got to go home. Thank you very much, life is good.